Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. We are way down in North Carolina, so we can expect some real Tidewater gentry down here. That was my impression of uh, Daniel Craig's impression of what someone in, the, in that region sounds like. I'm told that that accent in particular, the foghorn leghorn thing, it's not regional. It's it's entirely based on the person, you know, just, just like... 90% of my graduating class sounded like normal human beings. Occasionally, the spirit of the region just just seizes a single person, and, and we have to carry on the linguistic atrocities uh, for everyone. Anyway, we've got a, uh, a 16, all, just shy of $16 million, five-bed, eight-bath house. Uh, this is a, a far cry from, from the price tag we were looking at in New York. Uh, but uh, as, as you get further on down south, money just... Uh, Money just means a little more. This house, uh, it's its given big McMansion vibes here. We've got a chaotic roof line. Um, we've got multiple garages. I don't even, like, this garage seems to go through to the other garage. Is that, who, who can say? Uh, we've got eons of monoculture grass and a, a weird turret thing in the middle. Um, I assume that is the panopticon up there. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else this house has in store for us. Now, I did check the, the build date on this. This is 2001, the heyday of the McMansion. This is, you know, before the housing bubble popped. And so we, we were just building atrocities as fast as, as we could. And uh, this one in particular, let's just blame it on 9-11. I'm just going to say, let's just blame it on 9-11. That's fine. Uh, we've got a, a hotel lobby drive through This is... That's all this reminds me. It doesn't look sophisticated. It just looks like you're pulling up to a hotel and you need a place to unload the bags. Also, having all of these steps right up to the front door there, that's a pain in the ass. You, you could have just swooped the driveway up a little bit and it would have been much more convenient. I don't think this looks well, you know, good enough to, to justify that. Oh, boy. All right, we got a grand foyer. We are missing the foyer table. They didn't get the memo. Instead, they put in these, I assume those are fake plants because I have no faith in humanity. Oh, no, I see. I see taxidermy up here. I'm, a dread is building inside of me. We got uh, metal grates on the door because, I don't know, I guess this house is in a dangerous neighborhood or something. Uh, and, of course... The, the double prom staircase uh, up to an, an open second floor. The, the neoclassical columns that are evoking a problematic time of the past, uh, we've gone with an interesting twist by painting them black. That is at least not uh, what you would expect to see, so points for originality, I suppose. This is kind of a grand sitting room, I guess I would call it. Uh, this couch, it took me a second to figure out what the hell was going on with this couch because it is so covered in pillows that there's literally no space to sit on it. So all of those pillows have to go on the floor if you want to sit there. Also, <laughs> they're so floofy and floppy. At first, I couldn't tell. They've chooky knife-handed every single pillow, but they're not very well-filled pillows, so they just look crumpled. Um... <laughs> For the record, if you're going to chuggy knife hand a pillow, make sure that the pillow has the structural integrity to handle it. I've only just realized that this floor is marble. We go from wood to marble because we've got this animal skin rug here that just blends in with it. Uh, I, I don't know why you would make that choice. And then we've, we've painted the fireplace with this big-ass mirror. We've painted that black, which does... In some ways, it breaks up the, the blinding white pottery barn, and other ways, we've just moved from the pottery barn to the White House black market. Um, I don't know. We can see through here. We've got a, a pool out back, and this grand piano is crammed against the wall in such a way that I don't think anyone has ever played it, because we, you got to do, a, like, a little shuffle to get back there. There's nowhere to sit. Oh, wow, we've got some intense on-display wine storage. This is for people who are really, really proud of their wine collection. However, what they've not thought about is that, A, it's very bright up here. You've got windows, and the, the direct sun contact is not good for the bottles of wine. 
you know, if you if you got like two or three bottles that you keep upstairs in the kitchen and you're going to drink them within a few months, sure. But you, hopefully, hopefully we're not going through all of this in the time that it takes sunlight to ruin a bottle of wine. I'm going to assume for my peace of mind that this is climate controlled and that they're not keeping this wine just room temperature in North Carolina. You've got a kind of rustic style dining table. It looks like this. This looks like the, the aesthetic in here with this, this rough barn wood here. It looks like how you would decorate a barn themed wedding off of Pinterest. And, and the little fake candles up here. Uh, it's all very kitschy. I am I am kind of liking this, what I'm seeing of the, the kitchen through here. Let's see if we get more of that. Indeed. I like the blue cabinets. I think that is an interesting touch. Um, again, we're still going with this like old barn wood aesthetic, but we've, we've got it in set into the ceiling, which would be really cool if it were not for the fucking can lights. I know, I know, it's 2001, everyone was doing the can lights, they drilled the holes in, they, they probably came with the place, it's still awful. Why? Why do you need the can lights? You've got two gigantic light fixtures hanging from the ceiling. Uh, this one is awfully groovy. That looks like hotel lighting to me, the, the like donut of glitter. And then this one, I don't know, it's not the most interesting, not the least interesting. I feel like I feel like if you're gonna have a not interesting light fixture, it should be somewhat unremarkable. You know, where your eyes just pass over it and you, you don't think about it. it. It's just what a light fixture there should look like. This one I do notice and I look at it and I go, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. But now I've noticed that there's this light fixture that I'm not crazy about. Uh, we have made a trip to the Yankee Candle and picked out the most glittery candles that we could find. And we've got animal skin. At least on these ones, I'm suspecting maybe these ones too. Everything is pretty open concept, but it's it's not like a giant auditorium room. I feel like there's enough twists and turns through the space that the, the sounds are not totally echoing through the entire house. Looks like we've got a, a double stove, an oven with, with an actual stove on this side and, and a griddle either in the middle or on that side. Um, We've got a the TV watch. Oh God, we got a got a skull over the TV. Okay, the ergonomics of the space are good. We've not interrupted it with an island. I think this is one of the first houses we've seen that did not have a kitchen island. They've just done what I would call the sandbar in a in a house that stuck an island in the middle here. But it opens up the space so it's much more usable. You know, you go stove to sink. The fridge that's that's the triangle and we've added the microwave and that's still nice and accessible within that range the refrigerator is disguised as a cabinet though we do have to call this out uh, you can't let them know you eat you can't let them know you eat uh, because then they might come and, and steal all of your I don't know animal parts from you who knows the glitter donut is way too much this this looks like a 16 year old girl on Pinterest designed this whole house just based on the donut. It is it is infecting the rest of the space with that vibe. More views of the glitter donut. This ceiling actually looks kind of gross now that I'm looking at it. Is that a popcorn ceiling or is it just like a rough pink texture? I don't like that. That's unsettling. You could do better for 16 million dollars. Got a formal dining room through there. This is the breakfast nook. It looks like this is probably an outdoor seating area that that goes through out there. So we've got three different sitting areas to choose from. You got to really carefully coordinate your meals. Make sure everyone knows where you're going. And we've got a, I, I saw a horse on the wall in another room and I did not remark upon it. Now that we've got two horses on the wall, I do need to remark upon it. Uh, we got some horse girl behavior going on here. Uh, this sign says grocery. Is that the pantry maybe? I, that is, that is the Pottery Barn Pinteresty bullshit that is just so tacky to just label everything in your house as if you don't know what the space is. I'm just waiting to see the live, laugh, love sign in here. That's all we're missing. Again, the ceiling details would be 
cool and interesting were it not for the fucking can lights. They, they really just, they ruin the whole thing. That's a TV in want of a fireplace. I don't know if you're getting that vibe. The reason I'm getting that, I think, is because this whole room is, is just arranged like a shrine to the TV, which a lot of our homes are. I mean, my living room is designed that way, but I only have the one space. So that's where I watch TV. Uh, you don't expect to see it. In a rich people home, usually they like to obfuscate that shit so that they don't look like, you know, lazy plebeian slobs that watch TV all the time. All right, points for honesty, I guess. Look at that. You've got this stupid grocery sign hovering over your living room. It doesn't, like, if, if it were facing the kitchen, maybe it would be, like, a little less tacky. It's facing your living room. It, like, you've just announced that your pantry is in a weird place. That your pantry is outside of the kitchen. That's such a weird thing to announce. And I am at this point, now that we've got this view, going to call out that there's not much, th there's no color in here. The white furniture, don't spill on it. Don't spill on that or the white rug. Yeah, no eating in this room, but thankfully you've got three sitting areas to eat at instead. And all white walls. It doesn't look like these would be very easy to paint either because they're textured. They're like, stucco-y popcorn texture walls. That's gross. Um, I mean, you got you got the wood details, you got a few dark details, but there's really no actual color other than that, you know, the, the stove. That was, that's the only color in the space. All right, now we are in a formal sitting room arranged around a fireplace. All right, this, this is such an awkward little space. I mean, you got uh, the symmetrical chairs. Uh, it just looks like, when would you ever sit in here? Like, they're uncomfortable-looking chairs. And the space is just small and stilted. We've got a guitar up so high that you need a step stool to reach it, so you know that, oh, it looks like it's got signatures on it. So it's not even for playing. It's just for looking at. We've got the largest pottery barn clock I've ever seen in my life. Um, there are some interesting ceiling details up here. Uh, I think that the, this fan does not go with the ceiling at all. And the glass on these cabinets doesn't look very good either. I would just leave those open. I mean, it's, it's a bookshelf. Just leave it open. It's a weird little space. Also, it's carpeted right up to the fireplace. I don't like that. Oh, boy. All right, we've got a game room, I guess, with a billiards table. If your mansion doesn't have a billiards table, are you really rich? And, of course, they've matched it to the entire room. So this is when you see hardly any color in a place, and then you see a room like this, you're like, oh, you don't have colors in here because you don't know how colors work. Because you were like, oh, I want this one to be a color. And then you were like, the entire room, everything in it, blue. That's that's it. We, we can only do one color for the entire space. We got pinball. We've got a picture of a old plantation. I'm sure that's not problematic. I'm sure there's, is that a cotton field down there? Jesus Christ. American flag. I think I saw an American flag in the next room. We got race car helmets. I am... And then I think this is like a racing game that they've got here. This looks like the rec room of a 20-year-old young Republican who is going to get caught in a sexual harassment scandal at the age of 45. That's that's the vibe I'm getting in here. Oh, we've got a theater. We don't actually see the screen here. We're just facing this velvet wall. I assume something either drops down or I don't know. Um, they've made it dark, at least. They've got the trophy cases. This... I wonder if this is like a, a race car driver. We, you know, we're sticking trophies in weird places here. Yeah, the more I look at this house, the more I'm, I'm getting the sense that this is the house of someone from 
not just a working class background, but an anti-working class, working class background. You know, the, the bootstrappers, the temporarily embarrassed millionaires, someone like that uh, who hit it big in, in, you know, race car driving, whatever the fuck it is, thinks that that is, is entirely upon his own merit and now is indulging in wealth in, in the least responsible ways that he can find and is taking it upon himself to uh, turn around and uh, oppress the lower class as he was previously oppressed. The one thing that I can say in defense of of the, the b-ball money, the race car driver money, those kind of people, they at least spend their money. You know, the, the real one percenters, they just hoard it like dragons. It just sits in their banks so that we can't have it. Um, and at least, you know what, he is, he's circulating money into the trophy display case market like crazy. The ceiling in here, kind of interesting. I'm not, I'm, I can't see quite well. It looks like maybe a sponge painting motif something. Otherwise, the room, very white. And yes, again, this is this is all very Pinteresty. It's it's Pottery Barn, the distressed barn, white barn wood wall here. The room is so big it needs a sitting area over here by the fireplace. And we've used dressers as end tables to try to fill the space without you know not leave the space feeling too empty. We've got the mirror on the dresser. Um, that's tacky. And oh god, this little furry bench with the clear legs. God, there is there is some tacky shit going on in this room. All right. Oh, we've got we've got a TV in the room so we can destroy our circadian rhythms. Goes through to a bathroom that at least at the very least looks like it is not white. <laughs> the bathtub's on a stage. What is that the chandelier overhead? That is so much. That is way 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 too much what the shit is this like it's a clawfoot bathtub it's it's pretty does it need to be on a stage no this is all just like a, a pantomime of of what someone thought that a rich person house looked like based on a few episodes of mtv cribs and a lot of scrolling through pinterest that's all I'm getting through here. The barn wood in here. I'm sure the humidity is is doing wonderful things for that. I would be so nervous about slipping down off this step. There's nothing to grab onto. You're wet because you just got out of the bath. That's a hazard. All right, these so these are his and her sinks. There's there I, in the last frame we saw we saw another one of these on the other side. These are the his and her sinks way on opposite ends of the bathroom because we we resent our spouse we do not want to be next to them when we are doing our bathroom things the chandelier god damn it the chandelier just kills me and this is a round back from the bathtub pedestal uh we've got a little shower hallway with multiple shower heads this is something that seems very trendy uh in in the the really McMansion-y, bougie houses where you've got, like, instead of a, sh a shower door, you've got a, a turn and it's like a little shower room that is open. Except it, it means it really doesn't get warm. And also you got all these windows here. I don't know what floor we're looking at on there, but those are very open. You, you're, obviously you can't see anything down here, but you could see that there's people in here. All right, we got a very boring pottery barn pinterest room with a creepy little rocking chair no colors chandelier hanging almost over the bed that's unnerving it's casting bad shadows in the night and some built-in shelves with not a book on them oh here's a home office that is rather chaotic but at least we've got some color in here we've got this fun i think i have that same office chair that's so funny this that's off amazon that was not very much money what, you okay all right you've got a 16 million dollar house and you are buying 30 dollar amazon desk chairs fine this chair is fun though i like this chair that's got a lot of personality i assume that's a dog bed there 
the carpet everywhere is... I feel like by 2001, it was really more the style to have hardwood floor in your house. And I'm, I'm confused at why they've put carpet everywhere. That's so outdated. And like in the bedrooms, I can see it because, yeah, you know, you could, your feet get cold. Although you're in North Carolina. Do they really? But in an office? I don't know about that. This might be a, a co-opted bedroom, though. Oh, here's that grand staircase from above. We've got more probably fake plants. Yeah, those are absolutely fake. They are too nicely shaped to be real. And we've got twin elks. Are those elks looking down? Oh, that's good lord. Pinteresty chandelier hanging above where there's no foyer table. That bed frame's kind of cool. I like that. And it's, we've got a matching nightstand. We're actually using nightstands. Uh, we've got our little reading chair. This room is uh, boring, but fairly unoffensive, I guess. That's a bathroom. God, the long horns over the bed. Enough with the animal parts. If you have a deer head in your house, or like a set of antlers, something, I don't know. I feel like when it becomes a motif through the entire house, you've you've gone too far. This bed frame is very intense in the matching the matching bedside table. Uh that's it's a little medieval BDSM dungeony for me. Um also with the the matching bedroom set after after the last one clearly just going to like the big box furniture store and buying whatever the most expensive thing on the menu is. These bedrooms are really boring. Like there's there's nothing distinctive about them. They're identical little boxes with can lights in the ceiling. It it just it doesn't feel like a 16 million dollar house to me. Also, hem your curtains. Don't just let them pile up on the floor like there that looks like shit. Pay to have your curtains hemmed. You have the money. Another bathroom. This is a very outdated wallpaper thing. Or I don't even know. Is that like a sponge painted? What? I don't know. It's bad. It's bad. It's outdated. What the hell is this? I, I guess a kid's room? And we're sleeping multiple kids to one room. I guess th there's only five bedrooms in the house, so I, I guess you might have actually run out of space. But uh, counterpoint, for $16 million, buy a better house with more bedrooms. I mean, these beds don't even look like they've got actual bed frames. They're just like the little metal bed frames down here. This is like child prison up here. Do you just lock them up here? That's the vibe I'm getting. Why is there no color in the children's bedroom? Compared to the really nice bedroom sets that we are seeing in the other rooms that, I mean, sure, they were off the shelf, but they were probably expensive. For them to just have nothing up here seems a little... Yeah, screw you kids. Go up there and leave me alone. We've got a little balcony area with an outdoor fireplace. I don't really know what's going on with the ground here. It's not a good texture. And the pool. This is, I mean, probably the nicest area of the house that we've seen yet. Um, this is actually, you know, a nice looking pool. It's got some interesting details. You've got the, the seats that actually go in the water. You've got a big old pool house back here. Um, this is the actual kind of design and uniqueness and, and style that you expect from a really nice house. Yep, we've got some outdoor seating over here. Oh, this, this still isn't in the pool house, so this is other outdoor seating. We've got an outdoor TV. Um, really? Really, first of all... You're exposing it to the elements, so that's not great for it. Second of all, you've got a TV in fucking every room of this house. Do you really need it when you come outside? Do you just... Does the TV ever turn off? The chandelier in the birdcage. Pinterest. The distressed barnwood table. Pinterest. 
having these these plush chairs. These are not outdoor chairs. I understand that this is covered, but you know what? Sometimes rain comes at an angle. These get these have got to get disgusting when they get wet. Oh, here's the pool house. All right, this. I mean, that's some good woodwork. It's not kitschy. It's not Pinteresty. Uh, these succulent boxes are a little bit. Um, but it, you know, at least it's plants, unless they're not real plants, which they might not be. We've actually used some outdoor furniture. These, this looks like the kind of cushions that are meant to dry quickly. And we've got curtains around the side, which uh, presumably can shield you a little bit. This looks like a heater, maybe, so that you can be out here when it's colder. Yeah, look, the, the stonework with the moss in between, that's really nice. This woodwork is really nice. This is the only, this is the only area of the house that looks worth the sticker price. Got lots of lighting out here. That's nice. Oh, they got another TV in there. Seriously, you have two outside TVs. You have a problem. Turn the fucking TV off. You have a cell phone. You have a, you have literally a tiny TV that you just carry in your pocket all the time. You don't need the big TV in every single room that you go into. I bet that is tuned to Fox News 24-7. It's just Tucker Carlson on there uh, nonstop. Got a little fire pit area down here. A lot of blue LEDs. I think that's a hot tub that maybe flows down into the pool. I know there were multiple stages of the pool. Yeah, the TV. Oh, and it's we had to come outside for it. it. This TV is not only an outdoor TV, it is a TV over the fireplace. A TV over the fireplace because in addition to exposing our electronics to, you know, the weather, we also like to cook it uh, as we're watching TV. Looks like we got a grill area with some seating over here. Some strange, I don't know, modern quote unquote. Um, cubes. That's not a heater. That's a speaker, I think. And we've got some fans mounted. That makes sense. North Carolina heat is probably a bigger issue than the cold. Yep, here's the hot tub. This is the lower section of the pool. That's the upper section of the pool. God, it just looks so god awful, McMansiony, from this angle. Look at that. It's it. You've got this giant. What is that? Three story window here. You've got random round shit. You've got weird little step downs in the roof line. The roof line makes no sense. Columns here and nowhere else on the back of the house. And I don't think any of these windows are the same style. We've got a putting green. Oh boy. Why not? We didn't have a virtual putting green inside, so uh, let's just have the real thing. Oh, we're in a separate section of the house. I don't know if this is a second building or just a, like an apartment within the house. This now looks so shitty. Oh my God, this was just thrown together. I hope they don't actually make anyone stay here. I'm assuming this is for guests. Um, this rustic table, it no longer looks rustic. It looks like it's decaying. The kitchen is outdated and shitty. This is a $16 million house. I know I keep saying that, but I think it bears repeating. Why does it look like shit? What is this little area over here even? It's it's like they didn't know what furniture to put in here. The can lights, I mean, for days. That's the only lighting in here is 10,000 fucking can lights in the ceiling. Got a stable slash barn out here. All right, the horse girl behavior was gonna manifest. And yeah, we've got a giant gym out in a garage somewhere. No one cares, work harder. Those are the motivational slogans of a man who has never stretched after a workout in his life. He's probably got a slipped disc, sciatica, and his entire body is just fossilizing into a rock. I bet he skips leg day constantly. I'm seeing all sorts of upper body, you know, oh, I think that's, I think that's a leg curl, but I bet he doesn't use it. 
I bet he doesn't. You know those guys that are built like triangles where they're like huge shoulders and they're clearly like doing their bicep curls every day and then they get eee, little stick legs. The reason they don't stretch, those people in particular, is because they need the rigidity of not having any muscle movement. They would just fall over. They would just they would just blow over like trees in a hurricane if they stretched and had any limberness to their bodies. I don't trust that American flag. I assume that this person was there on January 6th. I think this house is for sale because he's going to jail because he was there on January 6th. We've got a paddock, is that what it's called? A little little horsey go round area that's covered. That's where you that's where you have the scene in the movie where you break the horse that was unbreakable and that's how you know they're the protagonist. More horse type areas, I assume. I don't know how horses work. Do you think they have to smooth this over with the tractor? Is that what the tractor's there for? Is to smooth the gra the grounds down if the horses tear it up? It's like it's like the rural Zamboni. And we got a little fishing pond with a fountain in it, so the fish are always disturbed. And yep, there's the property. I'm betting that that shitty little apartment we saw is somewhere over here. It's probably like a caretaker apartment. That's... I understand that you don't have the the taste or the wherewithal to, to decorate anything with any degree of class, but you've got the money. Don't make your caretaker live in such a shitty little hobble. And there's the house down there. You come down the long, long driveway. Is this a tree nursery? That's weird. It's a gigantic property. I mean, the house is probably allowed to be some degree of shitty because the property is just enormous and, and worth that much on its own. But God, they could have afforded to be a little less tacky. Well, that's North Carolina. Uh, it has given us really the, the worst of the new money McMansion vibes. Uh, just horrifying. Just absolutely. This, this is what happens when people spend too much time on Pinterest. Uh, whoever the, the man of the house is here, he is, I'm assuming, hugely problematic. Uh, and, and his wife, whoever that is, spends... 23 hours a day. She doesn't sleep. She spends 23 hours a day on Pinterest. She she designed this space over here before the derangement set in and the rest of it was was just an afterthought. That's, you know, just the sleep-deprived ramblings of a woman who spends too much time on Pinterest. That's that's the vibe I get from this house. Well, if you saw anything that I missed, uh, if you spend too much time on Pinterest and you feel offended, feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and have a good one.